AMD's next generation GPUs, well, they are looking very, very exciting. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jawa. Jawa's mission is to be the community for safely buying and selling PC parts at a reasonable price, offering low fees and great customer service, which I can definitely attest to as I personally bought this RTX 3070 from Jawa anonymously. And not only did it arrive quickly, but when I ran into an issue, they immediately replaced it with a flawless substitute and asked that I only send the old one back after I confirmed the new GPU worked great. And the best part is the price I got this card at was well below other their listings I could find anywhere else, likely thanks in part to Jawa's much lower seller fees of 9 to 12% depending on when you join. So if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts on a platform with low fees and great customer service, be sure to click the link in the description below and watch out for some of my hardware that'll likely be popping up very soon. Okay, so we haven't talked about AMD's next generation RDNA 5, or hopefully they're codenamed RDNA 5, GPUs in quite a while. And I want to talk about today because, well, we have a lot of information actually that kind of starts to confirm what these GPUs will look like. And yes, I will be breaking down these specs as well as potential release date in just a bit here. But I first want to start off with some information that was posted over on YouTube by official AMD and Sony sources. And it's actually a breakdown of an upcoming GPU architecture which yes, as you can imagine, should include the RDNA 5 series. Now there were three key pieces of information that I want to go over during this meeting because there was a lot said and we could spend all day talking about it, but let's boil it down to the need to know. So first they're going to have a new neural array. Now this is going to be a new design that's going to allow the compute units to more efficiently and more effectively communicate with each other. There's going to be some sort of redesign in the communication between the shader arrays that is going to allow for higher, well, gaming performance, yes, but more explicitly, I think they are trying to target higher ray tracing performance and other upscaling, etc. capabilities by trying to make it just an overall more efficient design. And that's to be expected. So let's move on to the next one. And that's actually going to be the Radiance cores. Now, this is definitely very good news because these Radiance cores were discussed in the video as effectively being a redesign of their ray tracing cores. And this was definitely definitely very, very much needed on the AMD front as they're quite a bit behind Nvidia still when it comes to ray tracing. Now I have heard some speculation that potentially these could be as good as Nvidia's latest generation ray tracing cores and potentially even, well, we'll see better than that. Now I have my doubts if they'll have better than Nvidia ray tracing, but regardless, it sounds like they're going to be absolutely spanking the RDNA 4 GPUs when it comes to that ray tracing performance. And look, fellas, even if you mostly play games that don't have ray tracing, well, ray tracing is absolutely crucial in modern GPUs as the vast majority of games coming out in the near future will have ray tracing to some degree, if not entirely replacing all lighting with ray tracing in not too long. It's definitely the way that things are going and it's definitely good to see that they're going to be seeing a massive leap here. In fact, I am personally expecting at least a 30% increase and possibly more when it comes to ray tracing. And then finally, we do have the new universal compression. Now, I'll just go ahead and summarize this. We could really get into the details. I'm not going to. Effectively, they're going to be trying to compress pretty much everything as much as possible that's going to be traveling across the GPU and definitely out to memory to save on bandwidth to make the GPU more efficient. But what do these three things mean for the RDNA 5 series, especially the flagship GPU, the one that definitely I'm most interested in and possibly you might be as well? Well, let's start off by talking about what the RDNA 5 flagship will likely look like. Now, there was speculation that it could have many, many thousands of compute units and be way, way larger than the RDNA 4 GPUs. And in some degrees, yeah, sure, that could be true. But fellas, we have to be realistic. And it sounds like some of those early rumors that came from the YouTuber and leaker Red Gaming Tech were likely in regards to the data center models. So I have since seen further speculation as well as rumors that potentially we could be looking at a 96 compute unit RDNA 5 GPU for the flagship. Now this does come from Kepler L2, the 96 figure specifically. However, if we break this down and we compare it to RDNA 4, here's why 96 is such a big deal. So the current RX 9070X 
XT has a total of 64 compute units. While getting to 96, yes, that's a 50% increase in the compute units alone. However, based on this information from the video that was released, as well as rumors circulating online, we can also tell that there probably will be at least some of an IPC increase as well on top of that 50% increase in the cores. We'll also be seeing higher clock speeds, likely going from the roughly almost three gigahertz on the 9070 XT to on the RX 10. Yes, it is gonna be potentially the 10 series. We'll see, but it does sound likely. The 1080 XT, the flagship GPU, should potentially be targeting the mid three gigahertz. That's a pretty significant uplift. Now, Kepler L2 did seem to believe that it would be 512 bit, but this just simply doesn't seem necessary. And if that was the case at some point in time, I think it's changed. The reason why is because all this new compression as well as the new GDDR7 memory should make it, it's just gonna be far more than what's necessary. So 384 bit bus, well, that would give you 24 gigabytes of VRAM running at 28 gigabits per second on GDDR7 would give you 1,344 gigabytes per second of total memory bandwidth. That's a massive increase over the current 640 that you see on the 9070 XT. In fact, that's gonna be more than double the memory bandwidth. And again, remember the compression is gonna be better as well. There's gonna be more cache very likely. And you're gonna be talking about a GPU that really excels at 4K gaming. Very important to remember that. And do remember to yeah keep your eye out on future rumors of this thing because this might be the GPU to wait for if you're trying to get into 4K gaming at a more reasonable cost. And you don't wanna spend well north of $1,000 or $2,000 trying to pick up something like a 5080 or 5090. But in any case, it'll likely have a TDP of 450 watts as it should be a combination of three nanometer and four nanometer designs from TSMC instead of the straight four nanometer of the RX 9070 XT. Although it is possible they could go straight three nanometer. I just don't know for sure at this point if that will be the case. And it'll also likely give you performance that should be rivaling essentially the RTX 5090 when it comes to rasterization performance. Now let's further dive into the 5090 versus the 1080 XT. Now the 5090, of course, by the time that this comes out will likely be replaced by the RTX 6080, which will fall short of the RTX 5090, but likely come in at 999. And at 999 to be giving you the same performance as the RTX 5090 in 24 gigabytes of VRAM, well, that's gonna be very, very impressive. How do I come to that number? Well, it's just simple math. You take the 1.5 X cores of the RX 9070 XT, you include the roughly 27% IPC or IPC uplift when you include actual IPC that's estimated as well as the estimated increased clock speeds. That's how you come to that number. You do some simple math and you come to a performance of 1.91X versus the RX 9070 XT. And in fact, that does mean that the RX 1080 XT should in theory actually be faster than the RTX 5090. But I decided it would be smarter to be conservative and say, let's round it down to 1.8X. And at 1.8X, well, if you compare it to any other charts that are out there, it does put it roughly in line with the RTX 5090. And again, that's how you get there. That's how this thing is so impressive. However, this would still be short in terms of ray tracing performance. And here's where it gets really interesting. When we take the roughly 1.3 X per CU ray tracing uplift that I am expecting, that means you have to multiply it by 1.3 times again. And I know we're getting into Scott Steiner math here, guys, but bear with me. This would actually put the flagship RDNA 5 1080 XT GPU as being 2.34 times faster in theory than the RX 9070 XT when it comes to ray tracing in certain games that use very, very heavy ray tracing effects, the 9070 XT isn't great at. That would also mean that this GPU would likely match or exceed the RTX 5090 in terms of performance. And again, coming in, very likely at half the price. So that's why I'm so excited about RDNA 5. By the way, I'll have all the links to all the information in the description below if you wanna check those out, but I cannot wait to get my hands on RDNA 5. If you're wondering about the release date, I am expecting quarter one of 2027 based on past releases. This is what is far more likely to be the case. Now it could happen in quarter four of 2026. However, it is likely it'll slip into the very early, probably January, of 2027. So yes, you are going to be around a year away from this thing actually releasing, but I do think it'll be worth the wait as this GPU is looking very, very impressive and is likely to give you a very good price to performance 
at the same time. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the RX 1080 XT really can match or even exceed the RTX 5090 for half the price? Or do you think this just simply won't happen? Or maybe Nvidia will come out with the 60 series and crush it once again. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.